Beloved, I don't know if you heard the good news. The first and most important is that Christmas is almost here. The other good news is the following. The West Indies cricket team actually made 350 runs in their 50 overs. Last time I heard, India were a hundred and something without loss. Some people have stopped listening to cricket, where the West Indies cricket team is concerned. And it's understandable, we sometimes just want to hear good news, and we were so accustomed to winning that each time we hear of a West Indies loss, we also sink with them. But beloved, as we prepare for the feast of Christmas, perhaps we can keep pondering that simple question. How well do we listen? Where cricket is concerned, many have tuned out, preferring not to hear, so that they don't feel disappointed. When it comes to our spiritual lives, how well do we actually listen in terms of what God is saying to each of us and what God says to us as a family? Every single person who comes to the liturgical celebration that we call the Mass, which is the highest form of prayer, must never leave here without answering the following question. What was God's personal word to me? Not the person beside me, not the family, not even the person with whom I may be at odds, but what was God's personal word to me? Remember, beloved, you and I say that we worship a living God, and every living thing person speaks. And if you and I say we have faith and worship a living God, which we do, then we cannot ignore the fact that God speaks. The question is, do we listen? Over and over, I hear too many Christians who say they worship God, too many Catholics who say they recognize Jesus Christ is God, they say they don't hear God speaking. These past three Fridays, we had free workshops on listening in prayer. How do we listen to God? The second week, we looked at some of the reasons, the barriers, as to why some people don't hear the voice of the Lord. And then this past Friday, we had the practical, helping people, giving them tools, how best to listen. I won't go through all three weekends, but I will invite us to look at the first reading and the gospel to see how God spoke then and how God continues to speak now so that none should leave here without answering that question, what was God's personal word to me? I have said it over and over, people may come to church, it doesn't mean that they're paying attention. People may sit in the congregation, it doesn't mean they've heard anything. And it's sad because sometimes when people are at their lowest or busiest, God has a word of comfort or strength to say, my son, my daughter, I am with you. In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we hear of King Ahaz. And he said to God, obviously he was relating with God in prayer, I will not put you, Lord, to the test. Who was Ahaz? He was a king of the people called by God to serve. But Ahaz, like many Christians, Ahaz was someone who was quick to say the right thing, but often failed to follow through in his actions. In fact, Ahaz, although he knew he was chosen by God, he kept the people angry and kept God angry by going against the very things that God and the people had desired. So we hear a king whose mouth spoke the right thing, but whose heart and actions were very different. And yet, what is the beauty of the first reading? God still spoke to Ahaz. Beloved, never forget the following. When God created each of us, he created us to hear his voice. That's the story behind Adam and Eve. When God created us, he gave us the capacity to listen to him. But over time, we have allowed the distractions, the busyness, 
dare I say, the disobedience to what God desires in our lives, over time we allow these to become barriers to hearing what God desires. When God spoke to Ahaz, Ahaz wasn't the righteous king. He wasn't the good king. He wasn't the king that pleased God. He was a king chosen by God. All of us who have been given life are chosen people. And God loves us no matter what we do or say. And God still loves us even when, like Ahaz, we sometimes say the right thing but do the wrong thing. And here we have a God who spoke with Ahaz. And he's saying to him, I will show you my power. And we have a God who says to each of us, if you have been obedient, keep listening. If you have been disobedient, I'm the God who's speaking with you. If you've been good, learn how to train yourself to listen to my voice. If you've been bad, I'm the God whose voice will penetrate any barrier of sin so that my word may touch not only your ears, but also your heart and your mind. Beloved, how well do we listen? How well do we listen? God will always speak with each of us, no matter how good or bad we are, no matter how strong or weak our faith is, no matter how faithful or unfaithful we are in participating in the weekly liturgy at Mass. God even speaks to the Christian and the non-Christian because every single human being is made in his image and likeness. The term we use when God speaks to us directly in our prayer lives is locution. That word comes, that guides us, that informs us, that gives us direction. How many pay attention to God when we pray? We are used to saying and telling God our issues and problems and what we would like. But how many say, Lord, I'm now going to shut up. I'm now going to be still. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. The very thing that binds us together as a people of God is the fact that we pray. And praying is not one way. Praying is sharing with God what's in our lives and then saying, Lord, your turn. Talk to me. You have something good to say to me. Help me to pay attention. Help me to listen. I often say to my female friends, sometimes you hear that voice which you call woman's intuition. That's probably the voice of the Holy Spirit. Do this. Don't do that. Go here. Turn. Go right. Don't go left. God is speaking, beloved. The question is, do we have the courage and the love to listen to him? The second way that God speaks with each of us is this. For those Christians who say, I don't hear God speaking, perhaps need to answer, how much time do we spend digesting, reading, praying his word, the scriptures? 24 hours in a day. How much time do we spend with that spoken, written word that's there to benefit every single one of us? Jesus says, these words, they are spirit. My words are spirit and they are life. So if we are having a difficulty hearing the voice of God, perhaps we need to answer the honest question, how much energy do I expend spending time with the word that God has given as gift, empowering me, comforting me, challenging me, giving me direction and focus. Joseph was a righteous man, why? Because like every good Jew, he would have paid attention to the liturgy. He would have paid attention to the word which back then would have been the Old Testament. So he was very much aware of all the promises that God had made to the people. And only those who choose to listen will then begin to walk in the ways of God. Because if we don't hear what the other is asking, how do we know to please the other? If a married couple comes together and one is sad and the other is constantly running around, how will the individual know how to address the wife or the husband if he or she doesn't say, this is what I need from you? And what is true in a marriage is true of our relationship with God. How do we please God? 
if we do not spend time with that word that he has given to say, this is what I want from you, my son, my daughter, so I can proclaim to the world, in you I am well pleased. The third and final way that God speaks, recognizing that in and through prayer there is that direct connection. In and through spending time with the word that he gives, which leads us all to life and joy, God has different ways also to speak with us. In the first reading, he spoke through the prophet Isaiah. Do we dare to listen to others? Dare to listen to others who may be the voice of God? Again, I go back to it. How many come to church and sit down, but your minds and your hearts are elsewhere? What's the acid test? You went to Mass today? What did you learn? What did you hear? That's the reason why people are absent from church. When they came, they never listened in the first place. So it's very comfortable and easy to be absent over and over again. I have heard people say, I have been to the Catholic Church and I went to another church. And all these years, I never heard these things being said. And when you ask what was said and the person shares what was said, you say to yourself, oh my God, where were your ears? Where was your mind? Where was your heart? God is speaking. Do we choose to listen? But there's a beautiful way that God speaks to Joseph in today's gospel. The angel sent by God becomes the messenger of God. That's what an angel is. And the angel in a dream, Joseph had several dreams. The angel in a dream said to Joseph, I know you're concerned and you should be. Your betrothed, Mary, the one to whom you're engaged, is pregnant. And it must be hard for you to hear this. Joseph had the law on his side. If one was engaged to another and the right to be was found to be pregnant, not for yourself, but for someone else, Joseph had the right to legally separate her. The problem was, in that time, that was a dangerous thing. It was not only the shame that was going to be brought on the wife-to-be and the family, but it was also a death sentence. So what do we hear happening in the gospel? Joseph, like some Jamaicans you may know, wanted to send the girl away into the country to have the child far away. And hopefully grandma and others would raise the child and the people would forget, hopefully over time, where was Mary and what happened. So Joseph was a regular human being like all of us. He wasn't superhuman. This regular, ordinary human being who was in pain, God spoke to in a dream. And God said to him, don't be afraid. I know, I know the pain you're having. I know the struggle you're having. But what is going to happen with Mary is something beautiful. She has conceived, not by another man, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And when this child is born, you will raise him. And you will name him Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. Notice what happens in that dream. Joseph gets a personal word. It was for him, not for his family, not for his friends. Joseph, this is what I want from you. And if Joseph chose to listen, and if Joseph chose to respond, that private word would now become something that is celebrated later on. The word that Jesus Christ will take flesh, become one of us, become one like us, and will speak with us in human form. And when he is raised as he will be, he will then speak for all eternity. Do you have dreams, beloved? Do you pay attention to your dreams? Psychologists today give us all of the different reasons why we dream. But there are some dreams that go beyond the labels of psychology. This happens to be one of them. God speaks, and very often, he speaks in many different ways. For Joseph, and perhaps for some of us, he speaks with us in a dream. Why should we listen, beloved? And to whom do we listen? We listen to the word who from the very beginning spoke and life came to be. This word will take flesh. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. 
This word has declared himself to be the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. As I spoke in the beginning, so I will speak at the end. Are you listening in the journey of life? Are you hearing my voice? How can I be a source of good news for others if I am not paying attention to the very source of that good news, who is Jesus Christ? How can I be a source of compassion for others when I do not hear the God of my life saying, I love you, I forgive you, come walk with me. This word is present and continues to speak, but we have to pay attention. What's the ultimate aim of the word? I have come to save you from your sins. If we hear that word, we have nothing to fear. If we believe that word, we ourselves become sources of salvation for others. God loves each of us, beloved. And he knows our individual struggles, our individual faults, our individual failings, but God will never let us go. Speaking of letting go, just before Mass began, for those who were present, we had the prelude to the rite of baptism. And while we were waiting for the song to end, Kaz, the one to be baptized, held my finger and would not let go. And we were about to begin, I'm going, how do I manipulate the microphone and his holding my finger? And I turned to Kaz and I said, anyone who holds the priest's finger before baptism will become a priest. <laughs> I kid you not, it was the fastest I've ever seen a child let go of my hand. <laughs> I guess his word is, you'll be a married man someday. <laughs> Beloved, don't be afraid to listen to God. Don't be afraid to hear the voice of the one who has only good things to say. When we choose to listen to him, we will be at peace. We will have a joy that the world cannot give. And we will have the courage to say, speak, Lord. I want to hear. Your servant is listening. Speak so that I may hear and understand. And when I do, like Joseph, like Mary, like Elizabeth, help me to walk in the ways that you desire. To the God of life, love, and joy, be glory and praise forever and ever.